Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, our king victorious, Christ the Lamb of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Led on their way by this triumphant sign, the hosts of God in conquering ranks combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We welcome all of you here this morning as we come together to celebrate this Eucharist. In a special way, we welcome those of you who perhaps are visiting us, I want you to know that you're always welcome here in this community of faith at St. Matthew's. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, we take these moments to call to mind our sins so as to prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nest and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So these uh, passages that we heard this morning are short, right? But they're very rich, and they have a, a, a meaning that presses upon us. Uh, in the first place, I uh, just look to um, our, our second reading. Here you have St. Paul writing uh, his first letter to the Corinthians. And you'll note he, um, I mean, if, if you were to take him literally, uh, this would be a very interesting world that we live in as Christians, wouldn't it? You know, brothers and sisters, time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, right? Uh, let those uh, weeping not as weeping, those rejoicing not as rejoicing, those buying not as owning, uh, those using the world as not using it fully. You know, what, what does he mean to say? What he means to say is that the world in its present form is passing away. And what this does for us is it sort of rewires our register, doesn't it? It starts to get us in a different perspective so that what he means to say, of course, is that our perspective really does have to be one that is eternal. We, we have to have a view to what really matters in the end, after all. And that really is salvation. Right? So, so St. Paul is underscoring for us something of urgency. I mean, we always hear that phrase, or at least I heard it growing up. I, I'm sure that you've heard it, you know, keep an eternal perspective, right? What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we're giving up on this world, right? That's definitely not what it means. So we're just sort of, you know, leaving it all, you know, blowing around in the wind because it doesn't matter, you know, just sort of hoping for the end. I mean, on the one hand, we do pray for the coming of the Lord, right, as we do in the Our Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But, but really what it does is it, it begins to reorient the, what we're doing in this life in the first place, which is uh, receiving a, a, a message, right? And having that message, that word of God that's proclaimed in our midst, a word, by the way, that's alive, right? That it's, it's, not, it's not in some um, you know, secret book that's in the back halls, in the safe behind a fireproof door in the Vatican somewhere, right? A big ancient tome. If, if any of you have ever seen that movie, Doctor Strange, you know, you, you remember that it was, you know, sort of at the center of the story is like secret order of monks, right? And they have all these secret books that they're holding, right? These secret uh, texts that somehow or another are responsible for, you know, unfolding the secrets of the universe. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that wasn't like an oblique reference to, like, um, recommend Doctor Strange. It's a pretty cool movie, I'm not going to lie. But I just mean to say, like, whatever Christianity is, it's not that, right? It is not a secret that, in fact, what we're supposed to do in this life is to proclaim the word, right, and, and, and to, to bear witness to the good news that's in our midst. Now, what does this look like? Not everyone has a vocation to preach from the pulpit like I'm preaching right now. It is true. But you all are called to preach the gospel. And, and I would suggest to you, mom and dad, this is nowhere more the case than in your own families with your children, to bless your children, to pray with your children, to hope and to pray as they, as they continue to grow. Wherever you are in your life, if you're a father, you're a mother, you know, you're always going to be mom and dad, right? That's, that's an important space to fill. 
And so yours is the sacred task of continuing to bear witness to a good news. And it may be the case that, you know, halfway through your life, you kind of wake up to these things in a new sense that you, re you recommit to them, that we, our, our lives are, are punctuated by a constant reconversion, aren't they? That we're never, we've never arrived exactly where we're supposed to be. But the point to see here is that at the center of our faith is not this, you know, a quadratic formula or a differential equation, an abstraction, in other words, right? It's not that at all. It's a living person. It's a God who is alive and takes interest in our lives and continues to build up the kingdom in our midst in a way that, uh, that gives, gives him glory. It shows forth. I mean, God owes us nothing, guys, right? He owes us nothing. Everything that we are is already his gift to us, right? You might think to yourself, well, Father, my life isn't a very happy one, right? It's filled with suffering. Our situation, if you look around us, I mean, some, some people have the feeling that it's just sort of like going in a very dark direction, right? We look at our culture, the set of circumstances with which we're faced. I mean, we have a lot of work to do, don't we? It doesn't seem very good. But just to bear in mind, in the meanwhile, that your existence itself is a sign to the rest of us of God's goodness to us, right? Everything that's good in your life, firstly, to just to take a moment and to, and to pray for the gift of gratitude, to, to, that it would well up in your hearts. You can't be angry or jealous or lustful or gluttonous and be thankful at the same time. Gratitude covers a multitude of sins, doesn't it? You just can't be thankful and feel all those things. At the, and certainly not angry at the same time. So I, I suggest to you just in the first place to cultivate that gift of gratitude in your life and to see that in a new way. Also, I, I want to I just to, to, to share with you too, getting to heaven, if that's the end game, right? Sainthood, radical sainthood. Let me, let me suggest to you that what the Lord says to you, right, what he's asking for from you is not your Facebook profile picture forward, right? It's not the pictures you have hanging in your house that show all the beautiful moments of your, of your, of your family's life. He doesn't want your children. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your gifts. He wants all those things, to be sure, right? Don't get me wrong. But what he really wants is you, the whole you, nothing short of that, nothing less than that. And I don't know about you, but when I think about that, I mean, if, if the Lord were coming to this, to this parish today, right, Jesus Christ walking and talking in our midst, by the way, he will be coming here in just a few moments. But if he were going to walk through the door, I don't know about you, but I'd want to make sure I was in my Sunday best. Right? I want to make sure my hair is brushed. You know, I put on my suit jacket. I'm not really that formal in the way I dress and port myself as a priest, but I would make sure I had my best shoes on. Right? But you know what the Lord really wants? He, he wants the whole you. He wants your heart. He wants my heart. He doesn't want just everything that's good in our life. Right? Or for us to think things like this. As soon as I get my egg, you know, my ducks in a row, my eggs in the right basket, everything all lined up and ready to rumble, you know, then I'll have time to pray. <laughs> right. That, like, that's never going to happen. Right. There's no good time to start, start praying. Every moment is the right time to start praying in a new way. Right. Just to, just to bear that in mind. So that's what the Lord says. You, you might... That's what he asked for from you. Like he called the first apostles in the gospel reading today. When he calls you, your yes to him might be a kind of wimpy yes, right? It might just be like, yes, but, you know, well, I want to say something to you right now. Even if your yes is wimpy, even if you have preferred everything else to God and only have, at the end of it now turn back to him and say yes, even then, he accepts your yes. But he also says something to you in return. He says this. He says, look, okay, I'll take it. But I'm never going to be through with you. 
In the same way that an artist obsesses over a great work or a sculptor over his greatest uh, uh, sculpture, I'm never going to be through with you. It's going to hurt at times. But it'll be worth it because by the end of it, you are going to be beautiful. You're going to shine with the radiance of my goodness. You're going to be a witness to others of what I can do. So just to bear that in mind. Now, this faith of ours is not just about getting ourselves to heaven, but it's also about grabbing as many people as you can along with you and bringing them with you, isn't it? It's not just, you know, when we talk about the, the communion of the faith, right? We talk about commun receiving communion with this, the perennial act, establishing all of us. Look, I, I don't know all of you to the same degree. I know many of you personally. Some of you I hardly know at all. But I do know this, that by virtue of our common baptism, I am your brother. You are my brothers and sisters, right? We are all in this together. We are all receiving the same body and blood of Christ, that we're all here together together. And this establishes us in, in a family relationship. It's a beautiful relationship. And it's one, when, when St. Paul says, they will know you are Christians by your love, right? Surely that's what he meant. Because this, is, this is establishes us in bonds of connection that are even stronger than the bonds of love. You are not alone, in other words. And the role here is to, to grab as many people as we can and, and to hold, hang on to them, to hold their hands and let us move together into the kingdom of God. Now, I say that this communion that we share is an outward tending communion. It's meant to be shared. It's not in the back room, right, in some ancient tome that only a few of us are privileged to read, right? It's not a secretive religion. It's, it's an outward tending religion. It's meant to be shared with others. I mean, we live in a culture where it's almost taboo right now to share your faith and to just be forward in what you believe, your innermost, deepest, most convictions, Right? But to share that, not to be obnoxious or proselytizing, but to share it generously as something that's part of your life and it makes you whole. It may, it, it's part of the sweetness that, that binds your life together and gives it meaning. Right. So just to think about that, I mean, in the first instance where this is, I mean, just to look at an example of what I'm talking about, look at the family. There's a mother and there's a father, first a husband and wife. Right. There were two, and now there are three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, for those of you who are strong, <laughs> right? It, it's a fruitful love, a fruitful communion, right, that gives birth to more communion. It's generous. It's naturally given away. And th this is the gift that we're, that we're celebrating today, what we're looking for today. God's word is organic and alive. When it touches you and your heart is open, it changes you forever. That's why the word of God, sometimes you, you crack open the Bible. If, you, if you're in that habit, I pray that you are. And if you're not, we'll talk about that in one moment. Why, you know, a, a piece of scripture that you've read a million times, right, a thousand times, whatever. I mean, to be realistic about it, maybe just a hundred times, maybe just 50 times, who knows? But however many times you've read it, on this occasion, it spoke directly to you. It's as it's, it's though God, the heavens opened and he came, his voice came down and it spoke to you and your situation specifically and concretely. I mean, that's an act of mercy on God's part. He does that all the time, Right? So this is a moment for us to really realize that our life, that our faith is substantive, that it's, that it's something meant to be shared. And I just want to, in a special way, bless and to pray for mom and dad in this, in this moment. Because yours is the task of sharing this faith with your children. To continue, regardless of how old your children are, whether they're grown or and gone, whether or not they're in your house, maybe little munchkins, maybe they're falling out of the rafters at home. I have no idea. But look, I pray for you because this is the faith that you're sharing with your children. This is the first instance in where the faith that's meant to be shared is in fact being passed on, right? So here's what I want to suggest to you. If our, if our end game is to get to heaven and to bring as many people as we can with us to heaven, right? Hanging on to dear life bringing all of, all of them with us, building up the kingdom of God in our midst that becomes the building blocks of the kingdom that is to come, 
right, that will be manifest, fully present here. I want to suggest to you that the only way to do this is to pray. Now look, some of you might not be in the habit of praying, but what I would suggest to you is to do something like this. Take 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes out of your day, and to, and to say to the Lord at the beginning of that time, say to the Lord, Lord, this is my consecrated time where I'm loving you. This is the sign that you're in my life as someone who I am loving. Just to say that. It might not be very happy. It might not be very fruitful. But that's what I want you to do. To take 10 minutes out of your day, each day. It's got to be a consecrated moment every day. To give it to God. And then in the midst of that prayer, think of, think of a passage in Scripture. I mean, there are a million things to do here. You could also pray the rosary. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful tradition. It, it brings you through the whole life of Jesus, the meditation on the various moments, the punctuated moments that are very significant in, in the history of our salvation. But maybe you want to switch it up, and you want to be with Jesus and the woman at the well, right? To go there, you don't, just, just to pretend like you're an observer. Now, when you do this, to think about what time of day is it right now, right? Not right now, now, but in the passage, well, th think about, is the wind blowing through your hair, right? What, what, is, what is the sand like or the rocks or whatever it is that you're standing on? What, what is that like? I want you to see the birds in the air. You know, those powerful faculty in your rational nature is your imagination. That, that's, you know, this is very evident when you're watching like little, little kids play on the playground, right? They're lost in some magical kingdom, right, with princes and dragons, and princesses, and whatever it might be, to wrestle that, to ask the Lord to consecrate it, to make it whole, right, to give it over to the Holy Spirit, and let him drive that boat, and to, and to just get lost in your imagination based on a scriptural passage. It might be Jesus preaching to the 5,000. It might be the nativity, the woman at the well, whatever it might be. But to just take that moment and allow your mind to be centered on something that organically begins to grow as an act of your imagination. Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Jesus, right? We're supposed to know Jesus so that we can love him more and to continue to grow in our love for him. This is the gift of the word of God in our midst. It's the, it's the power of God who's alive in our midst. And I want to encourage you. I also just, I, I want to ask for your prayers as your pastor and a priest. Ask, ask you on behalf of all my brother priests, and uh, those who are ordained in your service, that we need, we need your prayers too. But know that we're praying for you every day and to, know, and to thank you for your faith, especially for those of you who are parents. I, I just can't uh, tell you enough how edified I am that you're here in our midst and, and to thank you for the faith that you share, not just with us, but with your children who will continue this great gift and will continue proclaiming the good news to the ends of the earth. It is for all these things that we give thanks to the Lord on this morning as we pray to the Lord for his mercy, his goodness, the revelation of his word, and, uh, and likewise, that all of us might be sanctified and held close to the heart of Jesus. Amen. The profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. It was again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers into one, we now entrust these our petitions into the hands of our merciful Father. We offer him these, our needs, conscientious of, of our own needs, the needs of those we love and those of the whole world. that the church will be ever more fervent in proclaiming the kingdom of God and the truth of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a world torn by strife, God's people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bless the March for Life in Washington, D.C. this Friday and that all will be converted to the gospel of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience anguish or sorrow in their lives, that the Lord will relieve their burdens and give them joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be repentant and to believe ever more firmly in the, in the fulfillment Christ offers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially Emma Rugeli and Margaret Gerardo, that they may rest forever in the peace of heaven with Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we entrust these and all our petitions into your gracious hands, doing so confident in your love for us through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I would ask you to please be seated as we now proceed to the liturgy of the Eucharist. Just, just so everyone, just in case there's, lest there be any confusion, I I don't know about you, but it sounded like he said Mark Gerardo. It was Margaret Gerardo, who is the mother of Mark Gerardo, uh, unfortunately passed away unexpectedly, just so everyone knows that, number one. And uh, she also was the mother of a priest of our diocese, Robert Gerardo. So we pray for the Gerardo family in a special way. Many of you were, are, were friends of Margaret, and uh, we entrust her into God's keeping uh, in this Mass and in the coming days. Thank you. Oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. As I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. And with love everlasting you besiege me in every moment of life or death you are. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding, God of my present, my past and future too. For you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the 
wonderful I am, I praise you. Faith in your hands, all creation is made new. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself by the blood of his cross, brought us peace, brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of the, uh, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you re- 
Savior, sanctify my breast, body of Christ, be thou my saving guest, blood of my Savior. Strength and protection, may his passion be. O blessed Jesus, hear and answer me. Deep in thy wounds, Lord, hide and shelter me. So shall I never, never part. I may praise thee with thy saints for I.
Let's pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
Just a few announcements, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, as I uh, mentioned during Mass, um, we do pray for the Gerardo family. Uh, Margaret Gerardo unexpectedly passed away, and the uh, no, no information about funeral services yet, but we'll um, post that on our social media, and uh, we'll send, be sending out emails about that. But please remember the Gerardo family in your prayers, and all of you who have had uh, recent deaths in our family, this has already not been an easy year. 2021, we're barely into it, but there have been some tragedies. So we remember you and um, likewise continue to pray for your families. Uh, grades 8 through 12 were invited to join us for Life Team today from 11.30 till 1.30 p.m. Lunch will be provided. Uh, so, you know, I find this subject matter very groovy, and I hope you will too. So on Monday evening, there will be, we have a guest speaker coming in, the parish, uh, really the Catholic Eagles are uh, joint sponsoring a, a talk by, with, along with the Colby Center in Macon, Georgia, a pro-life institute and Catholic uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center in, in Macon, Georgia. Uh, is sponsoring a talk by uh, Professor Joseph Pierce, who um, will uh, be speaking on uh, the Catholicism of the Lord of the Rings. So Joseph Pierce is a, he's a <laughs> so you're, he, so that's how I would be if I were, you know, hearing this for the first time. So this will be Monday evening at six o'clock, and it'll be at the Student Center on campus. So uh, when I say that, it'll be I always forget the name of it. Russell Union, not the Student Center. I said, I said that last time. So Russell Union, what is it? The Student Union? Okay. Russell Union, it'll be in the theater, okay? The theater at Russell Union. And, uh, you know, uh, invite you all uh, to come and uh, be a part of that. If you want to get out of the house and listen to some, it'll be called Unlocking the Catholicism of the Lord of the Rings. So, Joseph Pierce is a, uh, he's a Shakespeare scholar, but he's also a, uh, a scholar in the, the literature of J.R.R. Tolkien. So um, even if you're not into this, this genre of literature, fantasy literature, um, it still would be worth coming to and listening. J.R.R. Tolkien, many people don't realize, but he was um, a devout Catholic, and he was a huge influence on C.S. Lewis, a very, very big part of his conversion. And, uh, and um, in fact, um, Tolkien's mother uh, was, uh, you know, died very young. And, and, and in fact, it was a priest who actually took Tolkien into a, an orphanage. This is while um, he was in Africa, actually, growing up. So it's a very interesting story. But long and the short of it is that his faith was something that was very, very dear, very much a part of his life. And uh, so we'll be hearing more about that on Monday evening. So, and pray that you, you can make it. Uh, our only request is that you let us know if you're coming. So you can call the office, email Melinda. There's also a little Google document that's sort of part of our advertising for this event. You can fill that out uh, in, on our Facebook page. But uh, regardless, just let us know so we can get, get a head count, okay? Uh, we will be practicing social distancing and the uh, CDC regulations in regard to uh, safe uh, safe um, group activities. Okay. Um, also, that event will be live streamed, just so everyone knows. So you can join us on Facebook, if nothing else. Save the date. Father Tim McEwen, my predecessor and a friend to many of you, also my former fourth grade teacher, Father Tim McEwen. How many of you remember Father Tim? So like pretty much, yeah. I mean, I realized, so I know he was your pastor. I know that. I know that much, but... <laughs> I was just wondering how many of you might be new to the parish since that, since he was here. But um, anyway, Father Tim, one of, the, one, of a, a, one of the great priests of our diocese and also a, kind of a spiritual master, he's going to be um, offering a parish mission February 14th through the 16th. February 14th through the 16th. Hopefully you can join us for that. Um, please uh, stay in your pew until an usher dismisses your row. You, you know the drill. And, um, and wish you every blessing this week and in the coming days. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.
Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Hark the Lord celestial hymn. Angel choirs above are raising. Cherubim and seraphim in unceasing chorus praising. Fill the hands with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, fill the hands with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Thank you.